about how the public might react. I met with Baraka to discuss his Tarkatans. Speaking from his heart, he moved me. I agreed to visit his colony and see how his people lived. The conditions were atrocious. This was one of my mother's few mistakes. Like all Outworlders, she treated Tarkatans with scorn. What they deserved from us was compassion. And the only way to get it for them was to reveal my affliction. To show all my subjects that even an Empress could get Tarkat. The scandal my revelation caused was intense. But with the help of Katana and Tanya, I emerged from it a stronger Empress than ever. My honesty, empathy, and resolve won over my remaining doubters. There is no longer any question that I am fit to lead the Empire. As the darkness enveloped me, I took a long last look at my family. I did not expect to see them again until their souls joined mine in the living forest. But miraculously, my beloved husband delivered me from oblivion. Though he couldn't save my body, Jared had preserved my soul. Like him and countless others, I am now a part of Ermac. Yet ours is not a peaceful repose. The collected souls within Ermac have their own needs and agendas. Before we can speak as one, we must first reach consensus. I had thought, as the former rulers of Outworld, I and Jared would hold sway. But here we are, two souls among many thousands, fighting for the right to be heard. And if there is one thing we do well together, it is fight. We will win the right to govern Ermac as we once had governed Outworld. And we will rule for the benefit of all. After fleeing Outworld, I hadn't expected to return. But then, I also hadn't expected the new Empress to make me an offer I couldn't refuse. To thank me for helping stop General Shao's rebellion, she asked me to be her emissary to the Zaterans. Going home. Bearing the seal of the Royal House, I would show once and for all, that my mutation wasn't to be feared. That it wasn't a source of shame. To my surprise, I was welcomed. But those warm smiles hid a dark secret. I stumbled upon a trove of official records which showed that my shape-shifting ability isn't unique. Many Saterans are born with it, but are killed by their government to keep it from spreading. Who started this barbaric policy? Who is now enforcing it is unknown. But I will find out. And I will put an end to this madness. General Shao's revolt left Outworld's armies in tatters. We were vulnerable to enemies both foreign and domestic. That's why my sister asked me to take command, to stitch her military back together and purge Xiao's loyalists within it. She trusted only me with the task. The soldiers, however, had little faith. They thought me a spoiled dilettante, unprepared and unfit to serve. That I could fight mattered little. All that mattered was that I wasn't one of them. I finally earned their loyalty by orchestrating an epic victory over Shao and his rebels. Though the general himself escaped, his forces were smashed. For as long as I am able, I will lead the Empress's armies in defense of Outworld. Through strength, 
We will achieve peace. Until recently, I hadn't met Li Mei, but I had heard the stories. How the Umgadi's matron superior blamed her for not preventing Emperor Jared's murder. How she quit in disgrace rather than accept punishment. But those stories didn't fit the woman I now knew. Li Mei would never have been so negligent. Eventually, I uncovered the truth. The failures and mistakes which led to the Emperor's murder? They resulted from poor decisions made by the Matron Superior themselves. They made Li Mei their scapegoat. When the Empress found out, she wanted the Umgadi disbanded. But I convinced her that it could be reformed. To make sure it did, she put me in charge. I am humbled by this sacred responsibility. The Umgadi, my sisters, they are my life. I will not let them be brought down by the acts of a selfish few. To elude capture by Empress Melina, I joined Havoc's crusade in Saido. There I summoned more magic than I thought possible and drowned out the old regime. Havoc's longed-for anarchy had been achieved. He was more than satisfied. But I was left empty and broken. Had I been satisfied as Outworld's high mage, not let myself be tempted by Shang Tsung, a great city would not now lay in ruins. I've caused devastation, ended thousands of lives, all because of my blind ambition. I've betrayed my oath, my sovereign, and my realm. These high crimes merit punishment, and I'll accept whatever the Empress gives me. My only ambition now is to one day be forgiven. After escaping Lei Chin prison, I was hounded by the Imperial Police. I needed a place to hide and to recuperate while I plotted the best way forward. I knew the remote canton of my youth would be perfect. To escape capture, I traveled by sea. Little did I know that a gargantuan storm was brewing. My tiny craft was smashed apart. I closed my eyes, waiting to drown, hoping that the Netherrealm wouldn't claim my soul. But when I reopened them, I found myself not in hell, but on a deserted island. From its ruins, I could tell that great sorcerers had once lived there. In the caves beneath the ruins, I found what I can only describe as a well of souls. Once I learn how to wield its power, I will become invincible. The battle has been lost, but the war isn't over. I won't stop fighting until I take Outworld's throne. That they thought Lei Chin Prison would hold me is laughable. Once free, I began planning my next campaign. I would need an unstoppable army to overthrow Melina. Unfortunately, most of my former soldiers lacked the courage to rally to my standard. Rebuilding my army would require finding new recruits. And that task is proving easier than expected. Outworld's golden age has left more than a few behind. Without hope, without power, they eagerly heed my call to tear down Molina's government. 
With General Shao freed from prison, we began raising a new army against the royal family. Though many were eager recruits, few were good at soldiering. It was so bad, the general was forced to change tactics. He decided that we needed a doomsday weapon. That weapon isn't a thing, though. It is a monster. Onaga, the Dragon King. The general told me the old legends were true. That his ancient ancestor defeated Onaga, trapping him deep inside Mount Sagan. The Dragon King is still there today. His pent-up fury waiting to be unleashed. Because Onaga is so dangerous, the General wouldn't risk trying to tame him before. But now, he feels we have no choice. Though I likely won't survive, I accept this mission gladly. I can think of no greater honor than to give my life in the General's service. Kwai Liang and I were working hard to build our new clan. But even with the help of his close friend Harumi, it was difficult. The biggest problem was finding the right initiates. Then, one night, while walking outside Harumi's compound, I was attacked. I thought at first it was a Lin Kuei assassin, but his strikes were too uncertain, too angry. My attacker, it turns out, was a boy. Homeless and hungry, his assault was born of desperation. He needed money so that he could eat. It was like looking at myself 15 years ago. I would have ended up just like him if the Lin Kuei hadn't taken me in. So I took the boy to Kuai Liang, who also appreciated his fire. We made him our first initiate. The boy's name? Hanzo Hasashi. No sooner had Titan Shang Tsung been defeated than Bi Han and his loyalists hunted us down. Outnumbered, we fled to Japan. There, we sought refuge from an old family friend. As children, we played together. But Harumi Shirai was a woman now, the head of her clan. Her strength, beauty, and intellect awed me. Also incensed by Bihan's betrayal, Harumi agreed to help me forge a new clan, one that would stand against him and defend Earthrealm. Her aid proved invaluable, and as time went on, we grew closer. To honor Harumi and pay respects to my new bride, I named the clan after her, calling it the Shirai Ryu. Now the battle against my brother begins in earnest. The Shirai Ryu won't rest until Bihan is defeated and the Lin Kuei's honor restored. I had broken the Lin Kuei free of Liu Kang's enslavement. We were now masters of our destiny, and could take our place among Earthrealm's great nations. But taking and holding territory would require a vast army. I needed more fighters to make our presence felt. Then I recalled Shang Tsung's dragon warriors. An army of them would be unstoppable. But trafficking in such strong magic would surely draw Liu Kang's attention. Sector advised that we avoid detection by building our army using science, not sorcery. We've invested much into this endeavor, and we are beginning to see results. Once again proving the depths of Sector's genius. When we are done, all of Earthrealm will honor our desires and heed our demands. If not, they will face the Lin Kuei's wrath. For 
it not for my godly counterpart, I would not have survived the battle against Titan Shang Tsung. Meeting him, though, raised questions. Why did I replace him in this new era? Why was I made mortal? Lord Liu Kang told me of his Raiden's nobility and righteousness, about his steadfast leadership in the defense of Earthrealm. He also told me about Raiden's dark side, how he could be consumed by rage and cast aside the rules he otherwise lived by. Making me mortal and incapable of such anger was to keep me from following in his footsteps. Though I understood the reasons why, I felt I had been done a disservice. To survive the coming battles, I may need the edge that only great rage can bring. As the Shaolin couldn't aid me, I sought out someone who could. Someone to stoke the fire within me and teach me to master it. For this, I could have no better teacher than the Shirai Ryu's Grand Master. My loyal partner had warned me. Reclaiming my power as Keeper of Time might have unforeseen consequences. In this, as in most things, he proved prescient. The process I had undergone did irreparable harm to my body. Taking back my power had cost me my immortality. While my lifespan would still stretch across eons, I would one day perish. And if the war with Titan Shang Tsung taught me anything, it is that this timeline is not safe without a protector. Yet I had never given thought to choosing a successor. Who is it that could replace me and protect my new era? The answer, of course, is Gyrus. Tireless and meticulous, he is perfectly suited to be entrusted with this grave duty. And no one knows better the temptations of the hourglass. I have no doubt he will be above them. Since this whole thing kicked off, I'd wondered why Liu Kang chose me to be a champion. I mean, sure, I was killing it as a martial arts star, but it's one thing when it's all for show. It's different when you're playing for keeps. Then Liu Kang let me in on his master plan. He wanted the masses to know about the world beyond them, the one filled with gods and monsters, and he wanted me to tell him about it. But I knew revealing the truth all at once would be too shocking of a plot twist for most. That's why I pitched doing a bunch of stories, to slowly get people used to it. And if there's one thing I can do, besides kick ass and combat, it's build a cinematic universe. I'm serving up movies, streaming series, games, you name it. I like that I'm doing a public service, and it doesn't hurt that I'm making more than a few bucks. It's the kind of synergy that would make any studio mogul proud. It was inevitable that the Shaolin Masters had me join them. They knew just how much future initiates could learn from me. Shujinko was one of my earliest. His ability to absorb anyone's powers and skills was amazing. With the right training, he could become our greatest champion. I knew that I alone could give it to him. But as his proficiency grew, so did his ego. In love with himself and his power, Shujinko became a threat to the realms. He hadn't learned humility, because I wasn't the one who could teach it. I should have listened to Raiden's warning and not tried to train Shujinko alone. After he was subdued, Shujinko's accumulated abilities and memories were taken from him. He is once again a new initiate, 
ready to begin his training. This time, Raiden and I train Shujinko together. He will become the champion he is destined to be. And I will fulfill my duties humbly and cooperatively. As her reign began, Empress Melina faced many challenges. To meet them, she turned to the people she trusted, her sister to lead her army, and me to lead her imperial police. Though I missed Empress Sindel dearly, I was glad my ties with her family had been mended. But while it was an honor to be made responsible for Outworld's internal security, I soon realized accepting the appointment was a mistake. I'm not cut out to be a bureaucrat, nor am I patient enough to navigate the Imperial Court's politics. I was at my best patrolling Sundo's streets, when I could feel the city's pulse and serve and protect its citizens directly. That's why I resigned my post and resumed my role as Sundo's first constable. I end each day knowing I've made a difference. I wasn't looking for allies against the Yakuza, but I found one in Special Agent Jackson Briggs. He'd heard gangsters plotting to kill me on a wiretap and came calling, hoping I'd be his informant. We planned to part ways when we got the job done, but then, Shang Tsung showed up to steal Sento. <laughs> Needless to say, Jackson had questions. It blew his mind to hear that the stories in Johnny's movies were real. Once the shock wore off, Jackson quickly sized up the threats Earthrealm faced. To deal with them, he got his bosses at the FBI to form the Outworld Investigation Agency. When he asked me to sign on, I hesitated. After all, me? A government agent? But it's an important job. And more importantly to me, an honest living. While the regime had changed, little else had. My people still suffered in silence, ignored by the rest of Outworld. Though now I knew Empress Melina's secret, that she was also afflicted with Tarkat. If anyone would help, it would be her. But how to get an audience? Sizoth. He was the Empress's new emissary to the Zaterans. I asked him to introduce us. At great personal risk, he agreed. And as I'd prayed, the Empress was willing to meet. Even better, she would visit the colony. She was shocked to see how we lived. She moved quickly to provide for our care and comfort. Thanks to the Empress and Sizoth, we Tarkatans are no longer pariahs. Until our disease can be cured, that will do. Though the barriers between timelines had been rebuilt, there was no question that they could again be broken. Protecting this timeline would require eternal vigilance, so that it could not fall victim to further outside aggression. But nothing in my countless lifetimes had prepared me for this task. In none of them, had multiple timelines ever coexisted. Monitoring them for threats was an entirely novel problem. It would require a novel solution. I discovered that though the timelines no longer touched, their meeting had left them intertwined. I can now secretly surveil all timelines, keeping watch for potential danger. It pleases me to do this service for the new era. 
Lord Wu Kang, may rest assured that it is secure. I couldn't believe that Liu Kang welcomed me in Earthrealm, or that he thought me worthy to study with his Shaolin masters. After a lifetime of wishing for one, I finally had a home. But my joy was tempered as I thought about Serena. My shadow sister was still under Quan Chi's yoke, and she deserved a life free of him as much, if not more, than I. Quan Chi and my other sisters proved tenacious, but they were no match for my blade. I snatched Serena from them. Then Liu Kang helped me break Quan Chi's spell. Her mind free of his influence for the first time in years, Serena chose to join me in Earthrealm. My sister and I once again fight side by side. Only now we do so for Earthrealm. Together, we have formed the Order of Light. Quan Chi's plot collapsed. Along with it, my plan to secure new beings to feed my starving people. Because I'd advocated for partnering with him, I was held responsible. If I didn't seize for Viternus' new feeding grounds, the Coven would banish me. But then... I had a revelation. I didn't need to conquer realms to feed my people. I simply needed to capture enough beings to breed them. Once they multiply, Viternus will have a limitless, renewable source of food. And I only need a few thousand to start. A number so small compared to the billions in the realms that no one will notice as people go missing. But it will be more than enough to establish our breeding stock and feed a ravenous Viternus. Quan Chi's defeat had cost me everything. For months I had furthered his plot, and now I had to start over. Saido's people were still in chains. That's when Rain approached me. On the run from Empress Melina, he was desperate for help. And though I'd had my fill of sorcerers, this one was different. I agreed to provide him safe haven. He agreed to help topple Saido's government. And topple it we did. Rain summoned a wave so fast, so powerful, that it crushed the capital. Saido's fascist rulers were swept away. My people are finally free. They can chart their own course, needing only to follow their own desires. Their lives are now blessed by anarchy.